Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where we will show you how to model loads and generate load combinations in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the various different types of member loads that you can apply in STAD Pro. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in STAD Pro. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the loading page in the workflow page control area is selected. When this is selected, we're going to be able to find our load cases in the load and definition dialog. For this model, I'm going to be creating some member loads within the snow load category. So I'm first going to begin by selecting the snow load group. Then I'm going to go up to my ribbon toolbar, select the loading tab, and then the load items icon. Within the add new load items dialog, I'm going to find my member load group. Now you can see that we have several different types of member loads that we can create. We can create uniform forces and moments. We can also cr create concentrated forces and moments. Also linearly varying loads and trapezoidal load. Now for each of these load types, STAD Pro has provided a graphic which will give you an indication of what the variables will be used to define. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter a uniform force. So we're going to select that option over in the left pane. Next, we're going to give our load a magnitude. I'm going to enter mine as negative 0.03 kips per foot. And I'm going to enter it for the direction in the global y-axis direction. The next thing we're going to want to do is specify our D1, D2, and D3 parameters. I'm going to leave all of these variables set to zero. When D1 and D2 are set to zero, this basically means this is going to be a uniform load that's going to exist along the entire length of the member. By setting D3 equal to zero, means it's going to be placed along the centroid of the member. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Add button. Now before I close out of this dialog, I'm going to go ahead and create some trapezoidal loads as well. So I'm going to select the trapezoidal option, and here I need to give two load magnitudes. I'm going to start with the first one being zero point, negative 0 0.04 kips per foot and it's going to go down to negative 0.03 kips per foot. Again, I'm going to enter this in the global Y direction. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Add button, and then we'll click Close. Now, after you create these loads, it will be necessary to assign them to the appropriate members. To do that, we're going to highlight our first load, and then we're going to select the members on our screen with our Beams cursor. To select multiple members at one time, you can just simply hold down the control key. Once you've selected the members that this is appropriate for, we're going to come down to our assignment method, select the assign to selected beams radio button, and then click on the assign button. And we're going to confirm this operation by clicking yes. Now if you don't see your load arrows appearing on screen, make sure your view load diagrams icon is turned on. Let's go ahead and unselect everything and work on our trapezoidal load. So I'm going to highlight my trapezoidal load. Again, I'm going to hold down my control key and select three additional members. Again, I'm going to assign to selected beams and then we'll click the assign button. Now that we've learned how to specify linearly varying loads uh, and uniform loads for members, we're also going to take a look at hydrostatic member loads. Now our hydrostatic load is going to exist still in the snow load category. So let's go ahead and highlight that category, go up to our ribbon toolbar and click on the load items icon. We're going to come down to our member loads and we're going to find a hydrostatic option. Now this is used to specify loads due to hydrostatic pressure on one or more adjacent beams. The hydrostatic load is, will be converted to a trapezoidal loads on the beams, and the load is applied over the entire length of the member. This particular load type is especially useful if you have a member that's been segmented and you know the minimum and maximum amount of the trapezoidal load, but you haven't necessarily calculated the individual trapezoidal load for each member. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to let STAD Pro interpolate that for us. 
Now this type of load requires you to make this selection at the time of specifying the load. So we can see here all of my variables are currently grayed out. So to make them active, I need to select my members through this dialog. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say select members. I can move this off to the side. And again, I'm just going to use my beams cursor, hold down my control key, and then select the members I want. If you need to, you can go ahead and zoom in. Once you've selected your members, we'll go ahead and click on the Done button. And now we can see that all of my information has become available. So here I'm going to enter um, my maximum as negative 0.08 kips per foot, my minimum negative 0.04 kips per foot, the direction of the load is in the global y-axis, and we're going to ask it to interpolate along the global x-axis. So once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the Add button and then click Close. So let's see what basically the program created for us. And basically, let me zoom out again. And basically what the program was able to do is calculate an individual trapezoidal load on each of those members. So I don't have to specify them one at a time. If I have continuous members, I know the minimum and the maximum value of the load. I can use the hydrostatic load option to basically interpolate those values. And basically what it does is it just converts those to trapezoidal loads for me. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.